Okay, so continuing to learn uh, Roll20 and how to set up a Roll20 game, we have a Fancy Pants uh, landing page now. We have two player characters with linked up miniatures, so their tokens are linked to their character sheets. Um, unlocking cool shortcuts like holding down Alt and double clicking to uh, magically open up their character sheet. Uh, they are also set up to work with dynamic lighting. So Chamomile a Tiefling has dark vision, and John Fletcher, a variant human, uh, does not. Um, so dynamic lighting, it's one of the cool features of Roll20, and it's one of the things that makes it extremely enjoyable um, from a DM's perspective uh, to run, because um, the players get to have a closer idea to what it's like to not be able to see in the dungeon and all that jazz. Um, so that generally brings up, uh, I want to light a torch, right? You hear that all the time at a normal D&D table, and it's just a thing that happens, and then you're like, cool, everybody can see now because somebody lit a torch. In Roll20 with dynamic lighting, uh, lighting a torch is a little bit more of a, of a thing, right? Um, so how do you simulate a torch being lit? Um, there are API scripts that can do that. There are um, all sorts of things that you can do to make it happen. If you wanted to, you could manually, every time a torch is lit, uh, double click on the person that's lighting a torch to access their edit token menu. You would go to advance and then you would turn on the light source dependent on what they needed. So uh, let's go over this. Uh, emits light. Uh, all players can see light, has sight, and then there's these weird angles and stuff. Um, we don't need to worry about all that, but what we do need to worry about is um, if they're admitting light, how far can they see with that light? So, what we're going to do is, uh, if they're doing a torch, torch sheds light in 40 feet total, right? Because it's 20 feet of bright light and then 20 more feet of dim light for a total of that. I mean, we could double check with the handy dandy compendium, but if I look up a torch, what does it say? Uh, yeah, sheds light in a uh, 20 foot radius of bright and 20 of dim. So what that translates to in rule 20 speak is um, the total is how far it's gonna go. The second number is when does it start uh, being dim and stop being bright? Right? So it stops being bright after 20, but it goes all the way to 40. Because it's a light source, other people are going to be able to see it. So you would check that all players can see light. Now this character will be a beacon of light on the battlefield. It's pretty neat. Um, and then, of course, they already had this checked so that they can see. If I save the changes, I can't see anything. That's because we're on the landing page, and the landing page does not have dynamic lighting. Uh, let's turn dynamic lighting on the start page just so we could test this and understand it a little bit better. So to access the settings for a page, you're going to go to the top of the screen. You're going to find the little blue ribbon that's hanging down with a piece of paper on it. That'll show you your pages. You're going to mouse over the page that you want to edit and the edit uh, box will appear. It's a gear on another little blue box. You're going to click it and a pop-up window will appear. The pop-up window has a lot of stuff. We're going to scroll down to the bottom, and there's going to be three options here. Fog of War, Advanced Fog of War, and Dynamic Lighting. We're only worried about Dynamic Lighting right now. We're going to click the box next to it that says Enabled. So here are the settings that I like to use for Dynamic Lighting. After I have selected Dynamic Lighting Enabled, I like to go to Enforce Line of Sight. That means that players will only be able to see uh, with minis they are controlling. Um, so that's important. Uh, then we've got only update on drop. I like this because they can only reveal areas with their vision after they have committed to moving their miniature. If this is not checked, they can pick up their miniature, move it around, and basically like use it to reveal as much or as little of the dungeon as they like. Which, you know, not saying players like to cheat, but... You know, it gets stressful down in a dungeon when it's dark and you're scared and it's dark. So maybe, uh, I mean, maybe I've done it once or twice. I don't know. Anyways, um, I also turn on restrict movement. If you don't have restrict movement on, uh, people can just move through walls. That'd be bad. Um, 
I leave the global illumination off normally unless they are in a well-lit dungeon that it's just lit in every area and dynamic lighting is there basically for walls and doors or they are outside and dynamic lighting is there just for obstacles and big ass trees and stuff like that. Um, there is a setting here called dungeon, uh, sorry, GM uh, darkness uh, opacity. And this is a slider that allows you to set how dark things look to you which is very useful for testing dynamic lighting. Uh, so I'm actually going to turn it all the way up. And just for testing, I'm going to hit OK. Ooh, look at how dark everything is. So uh, I am in control of both of these characters. So Chamomile has dark vision. So wherever I move her, she can see as if it were dim light. Spooky, right? You're down in a dungeon, and you can only see in dim light. Your players are going to flip out and probably not in a happy way. They're going to be like, everything's dark and I can't see. And you're going to be like, is that true though? And they'll say, well, I mean, I can see, but it's really dim. And then you'll say, right, because that's how dark vision works. And then they're going to think to themselves, I should have just played a variant human and gotten that bonus feat, shouldn't I? Um, yeah, but they'll get used to it, don't worry. Now, over here, good old John Fletcher, he is a blind as a bat human. You can see that wherever he goes, his torchlight follows. And if you look, you can see there is the edge of the bright light. And then over here is the edge of the dim light, which is kind of cool. Um, as a DM, if you ever wanted to test the um, visual capabilities of a miniature, you can select the miniature and hit Control L to jump inside that miniature and see things through that miniature's eyes. This is very important because it's a DM, you have control over just about everything and can see everything. So um, it's hard to say if the goblin sniper could actually see the character, but sometimes if you go inside the miniature, again, select the miniature and hold down control and hit L, now you can kind of see just what that miniature sees. Pretty cool. Um, so, here's the problem. If you are, if you have a smaller group and you don't mind managing this stuff, you could put like a little yellow token that lets you remember, hey, John's got a torch there. Inevitably, inevitably, your adventurer is going to say, I want to throw my torch. I want to throw my torch down. I want to drop my torch. I want to drop the torch down the well. I want to leave the torch on the ground so I could use both hands to fight. I want to stick the torch in the wall sconce. I want to do something with my torch. So now I have to go in here and I have to turn off uh, his dynamic lighting. So take away the 40, take away the 20. He's not doing light anymore. It's gone, right? So now he's dropped the torch. But where's the torch, right? Uh, we still need the light. Where's the torch? Uh, he threw it over here. So this is where um, basically I call them templates. Uh, I use them, you know, spell templates, light templates, things like that. They are tokens that are used to create um, light on the board or help you keep track of spell effects or area of effect spells, things like that. So let's go ahead and build one of those. Uh, we're going to build a torch. So we're going to go over to journal. Again, at the top of the screen, it'll be right about there. And let me zoom in my Chrome browser just a little bit. Might make it easier to see. Eh, it might be a little too much. There we go. Okay, so on the right hand side of my screen, we're going to go to journal again, looks like a newspaper, and we're going to go to add, and we're going to add a character. Uh, we're going to call this character Torch. And we could add some tags here. We could say lighting, and we could say token, or sorry, template. There we go. All right, uh, and then we're going to go ahead and save it for now, or we could look for um, some artwork to register to the avatar. So if I go to the second tab from the left, Art Library, and I make sure I'm on the My Library tab, I could type in the word Torch. And I have stuff here, right? Um, but you can kind of scroll down to the blue section, which is where Google is searching for stuff for you to use and pick out a torch that works for you. A torch that uh, calls out to you. It says, I am your torch. 
Uh, I'll go ahead and use this one right here. So I'm going to left click, drag it over. And now I have a torch, right? So I'm going to save it. And I'm going to check out its character sheet. That sounds weird, but there's a character sheet for a torch. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to say, you want to use character mancer to build your torch? Uh, we certainly do not. Uh, this is an instance where we want to tell it, make this an NPC. So I'm going to click uh, create an NPC. And just like that, we have an NPC. Um, the options are currently expanded, so I'm going to close that. It has absolutely no stats because it's a torch. It doesn't need any stats. Over here on bio, it's just got a picture. Now, if we really wanted to be extra, if we wanted to be super extra, we could take the description of a torch uh, from the compendium and we could copy it and paste it over into the bio section. There we go. So now it tells you, hey, this is what a torch does. Pretty neat. Um, even explains that you could use it to attack and all that kind of stuff. A lot of adventurers don't know this, but yeah, you can hit that troll with your torch for one fire damage, stop its regeneration. Pro tips. So we have a torch. That's cool. Um, we want to make sure that everyone can control this torch. So going back into the edit mode uh, where we added that bio, we want to, in player's journals, everybody, uh, can be edited and controlled by everybody. And then we're going to go ahead and save those changes. If I go over to my journal tab, I see that Torch is trying really hard to join our adventuring party. Torch is like, I am ready, guys. Let's do this. Uh, we're not, we're, we're going to, we're going to try to stay organized here. So this is a great time to talk about making more folders in your journal. So near the top of the journal, there is an add button. We're going to click it. And we're going to choose a folder. And we're going to call this folder templates. All right. So now we have a template folder. And we mouse over torch. There will be the three bars, the little hamburger. We're going to left click and drag it on up and put it in the templates folder. So now we can collapse it and hide it if we need to. Uh, but there it is. You'll notice there's a little blue dot next to it. That means that it's available to all players. But we still don't have a torch, right? We don't have a torch miniature. Uh, okay, well, you could drag things out of your journal onto the map, right? So we're going to drag torch out. Ah, oh, that didn't work. It didn't light it up, and it kind of squished our torch a little bit. So let's go ahead and clean up our torch. Uh, we're going to keep the torch relatively big because we don't want them to lose track of it. So holding down Alt, I can sca uh, scale, stretch, etc. Um, the acid a little bit. And I know it's a little dark, but there we go. And it does sort of snap to uh, to grid as I do this. Now, I want the torch to be a little bit more uh, free with its movement than a, um, a miniature. So I'm going to right click on it, go to advanced and make it a drawing. That's pretty cool. So now it doesn't snap to the grid anymore. Drawings are assets that do not snap to the grid. And we do need to make this thing light up. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on it again. And this will show us its uh, edit token menu. So who is this character? It is Torch. What is his name? Torch. Uh, we probably don't need a nameplate because people don't need to remember Torch's name. Um, he doesn't have any hit points. It doesn't have any, any of that kind of stuff. The only reason that we're here is to go to the advanced tab and set up some lighting. Can the torch see? No, the torch cannot see. Do not give your torch sight or your players will be able to see through the torch. Uh, you do want all players to see the light that the torch emits. Uh, now, again, we talked about torches, shed light, uh, bright light for 20 feet, and then dim light for another 20 feet. So um, 20 bright would be this column, the second column. And then another 20 would be 40, right? Because 20 plus 20 is 40. So up to 20 feet is bright light. And then, uh, you know, start of dim, right? And then it kind of goes uh, further, and that's as far as it goes. Cool. Now you're seeing this stuff for angle and all that. That is for setting up like a bullseye lantern, which is a lot of fun. It's a really cool effect. Um, and we, I can show you that uh, next, actually. So we'll go ahead and hit save, and oh my goodness, there we go. The torch is now shedding light. So 
next time uh john fletcher uh wants to um you know light a torch we could just give him this and then he can just control where the torch is he drags it along with his miniature he throws it down on the ground he forgets it and moves on without it and has to run back and grab it uh very immersive very interactive very cool but we're not done yet uh because this miniature is only set up for this map so what we have to do is the same thing we did with our player characters we have to register this miniature to the torch character sheet so to do that i'm going to select the torch miniature I'm going to hold down Alt and double click it to open up the Torch's character sheet. Or I could go to the Journal tab and open the Torch's character sheet. I'm going to go to Edit yet again. And I'm going to say Use Selected Token. Then I'm going to hit Save. And now we have registered the Torch. So if... John Fletcher is tired of being scared in the dark, because this is all he sees as a human <laughs> when it's dark. He sees nothing. Um, he, he says, you know what? I'm going to light a torch. So we just drag it out and say, there's your torch. Have fun. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to light this whole damn dungeon. And so every, like, 40 feet, he's like, I'm lighting another one. They only cost 10, you know, one, co one copper piece, I think. Yeah. And so he just starts leaving a trail of these uh, throughout the dungeon. Yeah, so um, that is how you would make a torch uh, token. Pretty cool. Now, we mentioned, and I mentioned, um, that you could make like a bullseye lantern. Uh, eventually, your guys are all going to be able to like see in the dark and all that stuff. And maybe you're going to get real tired of like... Uh, tracking like darkness and everything and they're definitely going to get tired trust me roll 20 game with um dynamic lighting is a game where every person without dark vision is saving up their money to purchase some goggles of night uh or people are actually casting the dark vision spell etc etc um but yeah i'll show you as kind of a bonus here what we're going to do if they had a bullseye lantern I find that Bullseye Lantern, um, you can always just copy the torch rather than have to make one from scratch. But, you know, repetition is good. So we're going to go to add a character. We're going to call this uh, Bullseye Lantern. Yeah, sure. Uh, lantern. I don't know. Spelling's really hard. And this is also going to be uh, lighting. There we go. And it's also going to be a template. There we go. And let's see if we could find some art for that. So we'll type in lantern. All right. And we'll scroll on down and see if we find a lantern that we like. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one's pretty cute. All right. So we'll go ahead. Actually, this one has like a little handle so we'll go with that one we're gonna drag this over and it it doesn't work all right let's see this lantern let's see there we go all right so we have this uh lantern token we're going or uh character sheet and we need to make sure that everyone has access to it and we might as well look up bullseye lantern in our handy dandy compendium to make sure we see how far it goes. Look at this. Bullseye Lantern does bright light 60 feet, and dim light for another 60. Uh, and it does it in a cone. So that's why we're, we're doing this particular one, because it should be pretty pretty fun to show, show you how this works. All right, so I'm going to leave that open in case we have to reference it. And I can minimize it by double clicking at the top here. And that will uh, sort of minimize that window so I can open it later. I'm going to go ahead and hit edit again. I'm going to go down to uh, bio and information. I'm going to paste in this information about the bullseye lantern and I'm going to save it. I'm going to go to the character sheet for bullseye lantern. I'm going to tell it, make it an NPC. I don't need any stats. So in that way, I have completed its character sheet. I'm going to go back to my journal. I'm going to drag the bullseye lantern so that he lives in the template folder. And then I'm going to drag Bullseye Lantern over to the map. All right. 
So it's a little big, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Uh, it'll be easier for your player to keep track of it. So now what are we going to do? Uh, now we need to set up dynamic lighting on this guy. So we're going to double click the miniature. We're going to go to the advanced tab. It's 60 feet of bright, so that's the second column. And it is another 60 feet till dim. So 60 plus 60, 120. Now we got to figure out the angle. So a cone implies that it's going to be like a, like a beam of light. So we could set um, the angle. I haven't done this in a while, so let me see. Uh, I believe it's 45 degrees should do it. And then uh, all people can see light. I'm going to save it. All right, and let's remove these torches so we get a better sense for how it looks. There we go. Uh, so now we have a bullseye lantern that, like a lighthouse, right? It like fires this like laser beam of light. Um, and 120 feet is pretty flipping far in a dungeon. Um, yeah, right? That's kind of fun. So if you were going through the dungeon as John Fletcher, and let me get Chamomile out of here so that she doesn't impact John's uh, vision. He's got this lantern. He's got he's to hold on to it. He's got to keep it safe. Uh, and he is going to be looking around the dungeon like he's in a horror movie. Like, oh my god, is there a monster? Where's the monster at? Um, so, yeah, that's kind of fun. Alright, let's finish up this token by um, registering it with the character sheet. So, in order to do that, I need to be able to see. So, um, hmm... I seem to be stuck in John's uh, field of view. I'm going to bring Chamomile back. There we go. Oh, that's right, because I turned the opacity super down for this tutorial. <laughs> that's why I couldn't see. Um, all right, so I'm going to go to the lantern. I'm going to right-click and make it a drawing so that whoever's controlling it has a little bit more freedom of movement to move it around. And then I'm going to open up its character sheet. I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to say use selected token and I have now registered that token with that character sheet. So in the future, uh, when they go into a dark and scary dungeon, uh, John could pull out his bullseye lantern and be able to see. Now, um, I have forgotten a step here, so this is a good uh, learning, learning uh, opportunity. You'll notice there's a blue dot next to torch but there's no blue dot next to Bullseye Lantern. That is a visual cue that I have forgotten to give players access to this template. Uh, so I'm going to open that character sheet. I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to say it's in all players journals and it can be controlled by all players. What is cool about this is that since they have control over it and since you have it sorted uh, alphabetically in a nice folder, if a player says, I want to light a torch, you could tell them, cool, drag a torch out. And they will be able to go to their journal, find the torch, left click, drag it out, and now they have a torch. Uh, and that gives them a sense of, you know, like uh, control as well. Like, hey, I'm doing cool stuff to Roll20. So this same practice uh, of building templates can be applied to many things. So in the next video, I will show you how to make a couple of low level spell templates that can be very fun and useful in your game uh, when you're you know, trying to figure out, uh, did that thing get hit by that spell or not? Uh, so I will catch you in uh, the next video.